so today, John and I, uh, we're going to look at this workshop repository that uh, a friend of ours, Jeremy Clark, has put together. And we're specifically going to do lab one. Um, it, from what we can tell, we haven't dug into the code yet. Um, we figured that'd be kind of part of part of the fun today is to, to get a fresh look at it. But the idea is, is that there's some code that currently doesn't have any unit tests, doesn't have any tests at all, as far as I understand. Um, and um, we want to get it under test. And one of the techniques specifically that we want to use here is uh, dependency injection so that we can remove um, remove the dependency on, I think, a logger. So we don't have to yep. actually be writing to a file, I guess. Anything yeah. else? Um, I, I like this, this <clears throat> type of activity because I think it's common to a lot of legacy code that you want to like start adding tests to so you can refactor it and all that sort of good stuff. Um, this is obviously not, you know, this is a workshop, so it's somewhat more contrived than a real world example. But, but you know, sometimes it's nice to have a simpler example that you can practice on so they can get better and when you do it in a real yeah. setting. But I like this, I like this type of activity. Yes, I think it, maybe not the next one, but in a future one, we'll dig into some code that was not designed to be neatly have its dependencies injected and uh, yeah. see what we can do. But figure we start with this. Yeah. A little more structure. OK, should we? Okay. Uh, yeah, and we'll put a link to this in the description. Yeah. Uh, should we go over to the code? Yeah. OK. So this is, so as, we, as we saw, there were uh, three labs. This is the first one. Um, we looked at it, I don't know, just super briefly uh, before starting this, but mostly mostly we haven't looked at it too much. Uh, it has, has, this, has some instructions here to go through it. There are some step-by-step -step instructions. I don't know, we'll probably ignore those. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how we do. Yeah. We, 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 might go, we might go look at them, I don't know. Um, mm. But it has some, some goals of, adding some, some basic tests and some advanced tests. We'll probably use those as at least a starting point. We might add some more labs. Maybe this will, maybe this will be enough. I, I don't know. Maybe we'll add more tests. We'll see. Um, we will treat them less as rules and more as guidelines. As a guideline. It's more of a guideline. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, we have. Our main project here, which references this library project, which is where most of the code actually is. Right. Then we have a test project, which has a dummy test in it. <clears throat> it does also have some test data, which is which is helpful. Mm, okay. I think that'll I think that'll be useful. Um, um. Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say that like it's nice that even here the. Um, you know, the data processor and data processor library are broken apart. Um, oftentimes, those are just one big DLL. Um, and it does appear, I don't know if you can go to, back to the program. Uh, let's see. Is. This one? Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty well factored in terms of like we have a loader, we're going to call load data. And then we're going to parse data, and then we're going to, I guess, write those out. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, records that. processed. Okay. Yeah, like it says how many already. were processed. I don't remember. I think it. I don't. Oh, it logs them. Well, logs like what mm. it did with them. Okay. It, yeah. So usually you're not even that clean. Like. Yeah. Like it's all mixed up together and you got to in, insert that initial seam. Um, so at least we have that. So really we're just going to be figuring out what we want to do around the logger in terms of pulling out. 
injecting a logger as opposed to newing up a logger. Right, like that. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, I agree. And typically <clears throat> in code that I've seen, all this loading mushed. stuff would be yeah, be all mushed together and, and everything. So it, it, is, it is nice that we have that seam already. Sometimes referred to as a big ball of mud. <laughs> yeah. Spaghetti code is another euphemism, but um, yeah. And I mean, in general, this is pretty, I mean, this method is maybe a little long for my taste, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So what was the first test that they, that Jeremy recommended? Uh, he recommended saying when the parse data method is run with the entire data set, the results should match the expected number of good records, which is seven. So if we call our data parser and we pass it our, I think this one, right? I think we should get seven, there are supposed to be seven good records in here, I think. <clears throat> okay, so I feel like this isn't gonna require us to actually inject the dependency. Like we could just keep writing to the logger. Yeah, and... yeah I think so. I think, I think these basic tests, um, it's just seeing how many uh, records were successfully parsed or properly parsed. Okay. And so I don't think these tests will require us to extract the, the logger dependency at all. I, I, I'm guessing what sort of what I was going here for is sort of the, uh, um, what was Michael Feathers call it? The vice approach where we are locking in the functionality first and then. Doing at least some of it. At least some of it's it, a, yeah. Yeah. Um, sure. So let's go ahead, like, Let's, uh, and then the hint there is to create a logger interface and using constructor injection, but we're gonna maybe ignore that and see how far we can get without actually yeah. doing the dependency <laughs> injection. That, uh, yeah, let's see. So we have, uh, we have our test here. Yeah. Oh, do you want me to, should we like run some tests? Yeah, let's run what's there, even though it's not super useful, but you can. Set up the watch so we're we're running continuously. Okay, so we have our one test that is passing. That is in no way useful. That, yes, that is. I mean, it's useful in the fact that we know that we can run our tests. But that's true. Okay, but in terms of testing our our code, actual functionality, yes, not useful yet. <sighs> okay, so. So do we want to do that first, that first test? Yeah. Okay, well, let's see, what should we call that? When parsing a bunch of data? I don't know. <laughs> uh, what did it say in the lab description? Uh, in this one? Yes. When the parsing entire data set, maybe when parsing entire data set. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> um, do, do you want to use the class under test terminology? Can you just call it parser. Yeah, I don't know. Like. I have, I can see how it gives clarity. Um, I also can see how it, I guess it limits your scope intentionally, but sometimes you might have multiple classes under test in a particular, yeah. even, a, even a unit test, right? Right. Um, Cause you might be testing the interaction between two different things. I don't know. Um, yeah. So yeah. we can we okay. can see. Okay, we can call a parser for now. Change that. So we have a we have a, a fun error already. 
which is when we try to instantiate our data parser, we get an exception. Make it work the other way another time. Okay, so this is gonna be a little trickier in VS Code than now that I'm thinking about it. Like normally I'd have my writer resharper tools that would Yeah. Uh I think in the instructions it said well, let's create extract interface. Hey, it does sweet. have an extract interface. I didn't okay. know that. This is gonna force us to find out, push the boundaries of what VS Code currently can do. Yes, yes. So I'm going to, so we're going to extract an interface. And then over here, uh, sorry, I've been typing a lot. If you want to take over typing, you can, but do something like this and then do something like this. Yep. Uh, we need to go find everywhere data parser is instantiated. Yeah, like here. All right, so we can give that one a real file logger. Right. And then in our test, we want to. What do. Should we just manually create a mock? For that for yeah, now? I think we could just do a, because we don't, we're not. For any of these first tests, we don't care about what the logger actually does. Uh, I think this is like hand rolling a mock is, or stub, or I mean, we could have a, we could do a extended discussion on the different test doubles. <laughs> I, but I'm okay not having that conversation. Um, I don't know. I have a worksheet that I use in some of the classes that I taught. Um, we basically go through the you know fakes, stubs, spies, mocks, um, and dummies, and why you would use each and which different scenario. But then that generally we just sort of wrap it all up and call them mocks at this point, even though a mock or a strict mock does have a specific definition. Um, I think it is useful to like know what you're doing like you're stubbing or spying yeah um but i mean yeah I think knowing, usage. knowing the different ways that you can use these types of objects mm -hmm. is useful i think it, it's useful to have the, those as different tools and be like oh i could do it this way or this way but getting all heated about which one is called what I'm... well i think also it's good to know like what the implications of the different tools are right so in this case we're just gonna we're just creating a stub we're gonna i mean i assume we're just gonna take off that not implemented and just not do anything with it right yeah it's like now. even in some ways it's even less than again using the, these are like the martin fowler definitions it's like even less than a fake a fake would actually really write something somewhere um in our case we're just Kind of no opping it. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, I use the term fake logger here because I think that's what it says in the instructions, but. Right. Which, again, like like you said, the definitions are kind of eh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I sort of intentionally mix and matched my terminology here, but. Yeah. So, we can be more consistent on that if we want. Our test passes, though. Our test pass. We didn't. Well, we still are just asserting pass. Right, and so we were able to instantiate the data parser now, but we haven't actually yeah. done anything. So I think we're supposed to do parse data. Data dot. Okay, I don't know which one it is. Oh, just data. Okay. Results. It's like just a count, right? Yeah, yeah, it's just a just a count. 
So we, we can name this like successful record count or sure something. Let's see, and then for this first test, we were supposed to assert that equal to, I think it was seven. Ooh, find out. Hey, look, I remember to write. Yay. <clears throat> so, I mean, this is interesting in as much as like it's given us test data and said, here's what it should do, right? But most of the times you don't. Don't have this nice test data. Well, more you don't always know what the code is going to do <laughs> yeah. with your test data. That that too. Um, so this is where the idea of characterization test comes in. But I think we might get more into that later on. Yeah, and if like if we had this data but we didn't know what this number would be, I would do something like this. Be like, oh yeah, it's just gonna or equal zero or something. And then you can see, oh, this is what it actually does. And I can change my text. Right. Okay. I, right now I'm preserving, I'm recording what the current behavior is. Which is what we want to do. We yep. presumably as part of this don't want to change any existing behavior. Okay. So I think that's the first test. We want to add these other tests. Yeah, so we can do a, what did it say, single good record? Uh, I think so. I mean, is that? Called, yeah, oh, it's there's called a good record, good bad record. record. Yeah. Yep. Seems like that would have been better as a first test. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Sometimes you, you have the, well, I know this whole thing works. I know this whole thing does what it's supposed to do. Uh, so that's true. I guess it depends on where you're at. Um, and then I assume there's like a bad record. Yeah. Yep. Bad record. Okay. Maybe maybe we'll need to take some time today and get my uh, the camel humps. Oh yeah, I have a I have an extension for that. Yeah. So okay. Okay, those three are good. And then I assume the other two are for the other two pieces of data that are in the test data. Single bad record, invalidate. invalid date, and an invalid integer field. <clears throat> so yeah, bad start date and bad right rating are the other two. Okay, do you wanna go ahead and add those? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna download an extension. Camel case Ooh. navigator. I can, I can tell you the one that I have if you want. Yeah. First new record. Let's see, the one I have is called Camel Case camel Navigation. Case navigation. It's the first one that came up when I searched for, for camel. So yeah. I figured, okay, well, hey, and it didn't require a reboot. So I, uh, Yay! Hey, you can now come out of your way. Camel humps. <clears throat> and uh, I think that's a bad rating. What that one's supposed to be? That's what the that's what the data is called. Interestingly, on these last two, I changed the name of the test and what data we're passing in, but not the assertion. 
which doesn't yeah. fill me with tons of confidence in those tests, but. Yeah. I mean, they're testing to make sure that that gets excluded, right? Yeah. It would, uh, well. Which I guess the, the next test will help us determine by, we're gonna actually spy on the logger. Cause I'm guessing oh. stuff gets written to the logger saying what kind of error it is. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, uh, we get different log messages depending on what type of error it is. Um, before we get to that point, um, okay. do you want to do some refactoring here? Our tests? Yeah. Because, I mean, a, a relatively easy refactor would be to, we're doing this every time in every test. We put that into a setup or something. If we wanted to go crazy, we could do a test case, because really the only thing different in our tests is input and the uh, number of successful record counts since this right. is i don't think i think with test case doesn't it have to be compile time constant the values yep um so these wouldn't work directly but we could make a uh, i don't remember how to do it but i've done it before where you make another class that provides, that provides the uh yeah the data to go into a test class, test case, excuse me. Yes. So, um, so I, I don't know. This is a personal thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and again. A lot of the things that are like this are due to some sort of trauma in the past, <laughs> but um, you know, little T trauma usually, not big T trauma. But uh, I generally avoid setup methods. Oh, um, I've generally found that they complicate the logic and hide a bunch of the complexity of your test, which then encourages you to write more complex tests. Hmm. For better or for worse, right? Mm -hmm. um, if okay. you're dealing with some legacy code, then maybe it's ne necessary to get you to a better place. But um, I don't know. That's that's my two cents on setup. That's interesting. I've I've done some not a ton recently, but in the past I've done some playing around with using vanilla n unit in more of a BDD style. And so mm -hmm. then I'll put all of my setup and my actual, like I put this part in my setup and then I- Do all your arrange. Do all of my arrange and yeah. act. And act, okay. And then just have the assert in the tests. Um, that works really well for some types of testing. Like if you, if, if there are a bunch of, if you do one action and then have a bunch of things that you want to assert about how that action was performed. Um, and you want all of those to assert separately. Yes, yes. Because it's still going to re, it's still going to re-run setup for each of those. Yeah, if you just do it, if you just do a normal setup as opposed to like a fixture setup or whatever it's called now. Right. But yeah. Um, uh, I don't, I don't think that would be, good fit for this type of what we're trying to test here, but that might be interesting to play with sometime. Yeah. So early in my unit testing days, um, there was like, I guess probably a stated rule somewhere. It's like one assert per test. Yeah. Um, I've come to be less strident on that as a one assert. I do want to only usually, again, in a, in a unit testing setting, setting, like want to be only asserting one class of things, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like that one thing has happened. I may need to assert multiple things to ensure that it happened. Um, so I guess what I'm thinking 
is my assumption is, is that we're going to write additional tests that mock this logger and we're going to get rid of the fake logger. Or we could get rid of the fake logger. Right. Or um, turn the fake logger into our mock logger. Whatever. Right. And so I'm thinking that we are going to progressively enhance these tests. Mm, gotcha. Um, as opposed to them being something that we could refactor now. Because I think if that makes sense. But yeah. I yeah, I was thinking in looking at the instructions, I was thinking not having looked at them super closely, I was thinking that we would add additional tests for the logging stuff, but it makes a lot of sense to just add the assertions about the logging to these existing tests. Yeah, so we'll assert the, the count is correct, but also assert that whatever interactions we've had were correct as well. Yeah. Um, because again, it's all about that one piece of functionality, um, the parsing the record. Yeah. I mean, I could see an argument that like the number of parsed records and the interaction it has with the logger are two separate things you'd want to test, but I don't know. I feel like that's yeah. potentially more granular than I care about in general. Yeah. I think it's I think it gets messier on this first test. With like yes. this one, it's hey, we want to test this one, this one path through the code. And so this one path through the code, it should parse one record and it shouldn't log anything. I think it's how it behaves. And okay. this one, it should have, you know, this exact record count, you know, it should not parse this one record properly and it should have this specific log message. Right. Or this type of log message. But I mean, not to introduce too many things, like that first one would be a good candidate for like an approval test style yeah. style test. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's what this one feels like to me. Is that, is an that it wants to be an approval test. So, so first, I'm thinking, based on where we are, we want to add a dependency on mock moq, which is a mock slash stub slash spy slash whatever you want to call it. Test double. All of those things. Framework. Um. I think it's just called MOQ. Yep. So you get package. Um, if you're okay, be interested in adding approval tests as well. Maybe maybe we can do these bottom three and then add approval tests for that last, for the big one. Okay, yeah, that'd be good. I haven't, like, I know what approval tests are and I've done them like manually. I don't know if I've ever used the actual library in, Interesting. in a thing. I've looked at it, but I, I don't know that I've actually ever used it in a thing before. So that might be so, interesting. Yeah, so uh, I found it to be useful in these types of cases. Um, I mean, I don't know if you remember this, but like we basically wrote a version of approval tests when we were at a previous employer together. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. For some reports that got generated, right? That, right. So we, inserted a seam to inject data into the report generation and then inject it and then got a seam so where we could capture before it went to the printer and we would take all of that and now put it to a file and then compare it each time we went through it um again kind of in that spirit of like we want to make sure that all the data is in there and it's all formatted correctly before it goes to the printer that's the one thing we're trying to assert there's a lot of lot in there but like um that was the whole thing so approval yeah. tests i remember when i first saw approval tests demoed i was like i wish i'd had that <laughs> when i was doing that it would make it a lot easier so yeah. um that, was, that yeah. was actually the exact case i was thinking of when i was looking when we were first looking at this one because here we have a big blob of data and a big blob mm -hmm. of i mean in this case it's not really a big blob of data that comes out but it's you know, there are a set of things, a, a maybe maybe larger set of things that happen as an output. And you just want to be like, okay, if I if I handed this big blob of stuff, this stuff happens. And approval yeah. tests are a great option for that. Where these are these other tests are a lot more granular. Right. Yeah. And especially if it's like a big blob of text, that makes it like super amenable. Yeah. Um, so I know with 
that particular system, right? It was a lot of times the printing was going to be into like a on top of like a federal form, right? So it was like actually filling out a form you, that you put through the printer. And so spacing, like location, all of those things were specified yeah. in that format and were super important to make sure that they stayed consistent. Um, so if anything changed, you wanted to know about it. Right. Not just the data, like, okay, so let's use mock and get these three more isolated ones under test, I guess, okay. or four, I guess there's four of them. Oh, I will probably need a that. And then the thing that I always forget to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that one still passes, but now we can do something cooler like uh, verify x.log was called with, should we just do as any for the moment? Uh, well, just do, can we just do like empty string and then we'll see what it looks like? Oh, yeah, we could do that. Because <clears throat> it'll fail, but it'll fail again kind of in this Kind of characterization to uh, right. no invocations performed. Um, oh, because that one isn't performed, but it was right. It was. What's this? No, uh, oh. this isn't super useful. No, this isn't super useful, unfortunately. Okay, well, we can go see what it should be then. Okay. So let's see. Uh, this is on. Oh, on a good record. Oh, actually, it won't ever call this one. Oh, oh, it's one good record. So we should, uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't log when it's successful. Nope. It only logs when, when it's upset. Yep. Just when it's upset. Ah, okay. Uh, so we can do, whoops, I can't do that. Well, can we, it can like verify like not called, right? Um, in uh, the previous employer, we had a verify never, but I think that was a custom extension method that we did. I think verify no other calls now. Yeah, so I think you have to do. Um, oh. Times, oh, that's right. Times, dot times none. I think we should, or, yeah, change the okay. log to be anything. There's any. Any string. So that's saying. The log method should get called with any two strings, no times. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So, which is passing. Um, well, this is maybe pointing out the utility of doing the refactoring you were proposing before. But, um, that should fail, right? Because hey, there it tells hey, us like that that output was more useful. Okay, so I should say wrong number of fields have been recorded. The first string, yeah, like that. Times once, yeah. Does this verif verify without the times? It will make sure that it's at least once. No, I'm not sure. I saw that when the, the times specifications allow us to do at most once, at least once. Hmm. Um, in this case, I think it's benefit in being explicit. Yeah. I do think it's I think do think it's probably at least once, right? Because if it does it again, then you'd have to it'd be another verify. Right. 
Like I think it won't check that it's only once and only once. Is there a, a times dot exactly one? I think that's what once is. Oh, you can't do exactly. Yeah, so once probably does exactly once. <clears throat> so presumably this uh, these values should be different now. Yeah, yeah. Look, it gave us some. Look at that. Data that layer. Oh, that's interesting. On on this one, it tells us the record that is bad. Where this one, it just says bad record. Like it doesn't. I think this is just the line. Mm, yeah, just the, the the data. Yeah, which I assume it could do here as well. But interesting. So, well, oops. Well, I, I think to your point, like we're we're changing the same two lines, but we are able to do it progressively as opposed to having to change all of four at once by not. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> There's some value uh, in that. Yeah. And uh, with with uh, with test code, like I think the removing duplication, don't repeat yourself type principle still applies, but it's different than with production code. Yes. I think you can get overzealous and then you end up breaking tests because again, this is part of what I get burned with setup, right? Like, well, the setup gets yeah. customized. So you have half the setup here and half the setup in the test and then they interact poorly and you get all sorts of weird things. And so you're jumping around trying to understand what is going on in this test. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the last one. Should we do uh, an approval test? Yeah, well, I'm trying to think how that would interact with this, this verify. Um, Like I'm wondering for that, we wouldn't want to use mock. We'd want to use a fake logger and we'll capture all the input to a string and then dump that out. Mm -hmm. Does that sound reasonable yeah. as an approach? I think so. with, with approval tests, I mean, I know by it, it does, it, it likes you to look at actual like files on disk. Can you also look at just strings? So what, um, here, why don't we just do it? So okay. why don't you uh, uh, import approval tests? There we go. It's a cool well, capital T test, I think is what it is. Yeah, we'll see. Wow, a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. It's especially the .NET version. This is a little bunch greedy. of other stuff. It has a lot of utilities to be able to approve different types of things. Which okay. In this particular project, it's maybe. I mean, a lot of it we won't use, and so maybe it's overkill. But in a in a more real world scenario, it would probably be just fine to add all of those because right. you'll probably use more than just one or two of them. So if we, um, so if we were to add here, we can now just do approvals dot, well, approvals. I think we need to, Oh, does it not let you do the thing? It doesn't let me do lots of things oh. on my side. Okay, so um, 
Right, so we have a bunch of different, oh, how about you type it so that it shows up on the screen share? Just do oh, a dot. Sure. Right, so if you start verify. talking verify, right, there's a bunch of different things we could verify. We can verify a file, HTML, JSON, and it does special things for each of those that like help give you more useful input when they diff. Um, in this case, we just wanted to verify because we're not gonna actually write to a file um, verify basically just takes an object and serializes it and it does the file diffing for you. Like it writes the file. Um, oh, gotcha. So what I'm thinking is if we have the fake logger um, capture all of the data, um, so in our log method, yeah. We could just have a class method on the or class variable that just we just append to. Just a string. Yeah. Something like that. Sure. And we could format it however we want. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go for slash r slash because I'm on Windows. OK, we do need to make that available outside of the class. OK, do you want to like? We can just make it a property. Yes. Um, That's fine, too. It's a test class. OK. I don't know. If you care, eh, I'm I'm good with that. Okay. For uh, like you said, for the purposes of this test class, I think that's fine. So then, uh, in our verify on the sixteen, we just do mock logger dot um, dot log messages. whatever is log messages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is different in as much as we don't specify what we expect. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So we do need. Okay, so we do need to add a, a reporter. Um, so if at the, like after line nine, we add another attribute, um, use reporter, and you're gonna do uh, open paren, and the parameter is gonna be type of, like the operator type of, and we're gonna do type of diff reporter. Okay. Um, we're going to find out if you have a diff reporter that is supported or not. Hey, look, oh, it uses, look. that does that. Cool. Okay, so it's using the VS Code built-in diff reporter, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how useful it is, but basically the thing on the left is what it got from us, right? So that is all of our log messages Catenated, we can see that there's the message and then the data for each of the four that fail. Right. Um, so in order to get this to pass, we just need to copy everything on the right, left over to the right. Um, sometimes in diff tools, there's like a copy right. Yeah, like a little arrow button or something. Which is nice, but I don't see that clearly okay. here. And then I, I can just save this one and it's in yeah, the right so place. Then, yep. So if you notice, it's now going to save. Uh, you can see in your Explorer on the left, there's now an approved file. Right. Approved image. And that's what you would then check into source control. And this one you set to ignore or something like that. Right. Well, if we run it again, let's see. If I just save this, it should run again. Um, the, yeah, the received oh, no. only shows up when it fails. Oh, nice. Okay. So I think it temporarily creates it, does a check, does, does or I don't know if it loads the approved and then checks and then outputs received. I, I haven't looked into the code that closely, but um, if everything has gone well, you shouldn't have any received files. Gotcha. I guess, I guess everything is passed. I don't know if that's well all the time. But, <laughs> right. Um, 
So that like, I don't know, I think that's a good mix of different techniques here, right? Yeah. We've used, we used a, basically a dummy to get started. So we got the counts. We used mocking framework to verify that the log is gets called with the right data. And then we used really a fake logger, captured the, the messages and, and then verified that the messages are we, what we expect, but using a approval styles, style testing where we just said, well, this is what we got. Like yep. that must be what it should do. <laughs> this is what we got. Let me know if it ever changes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So again, we've characterized the code. We've we've decided, we've said, here's what it's currently doing. Like you said, if it changes, then we want to get notified. It's basically putting uh, like you mentioned, feathers talks about as a vice or you know, um, but basically check for regressions, check for changes. I mean, we think of regression as bad, but change might be fine too. I mean, mm -hmm. we, if it's intended change. Yes. Well, and we can make sure that only the intended changes happen as opposed to- uh, Accidental changes. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else in the readme? Like, oh, it's let's, just the- Oh, we can see. The basic tests, the advanced tests, I'm guessing that's it. Yeah, Stop reading cool. now. <laughs> Stop reading now. Um, I think we have another case that isn't covered in the advanced tests where we made sure that all of the log output when doing the whatever it's called entire data set right. is covered. Like we, we added that one, which is not in here. Yeah. Overachieved a little bit. We did. We did. Um, I guess it's also worth pointing out that like we used um, the approval test framework to to verify this. Um, we we didn't have to. We could have done it with just normal end unit stuff. Uh, in this case, it like there are four log messages, and we could have you know kept those in a list here or something, or even having this whole string in a test. You know, wouldn't be terrible. But if this yeah. were like like the example we were talking about before, where it's this whole big printer output thing that's going to go to a an actual printer and be a multi-page document or something like that, uh, that would be kind of a pain to to verify yeah. using some of these other tools. So, well, like and even in this case, we could have we could have just done four verifies to make sure that the log yeah. got called. Oh yeah, with the yeah. four yeah. different yeah, values as well. We just done that too. So in this yeah. in this particular case, you know, it's a little bit contrived, and so we we could have used something without pulling in a whole other library. But as this type of example gets more complicated, then using something like approval tests makes a lot more sense. Yep. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else in here? And then it just goes through the like yeah. step by step. It, it might be interesting to go through the step-by-step step and see how what we did differed from uh, what, what Jeremy put together here. But I don't know that we need to do that as part of this video. We'll leave that as an exercise for the viewer. There we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, I think we're done. Yep, I think so.